Hirudin is a peptide that leeches secrete into your body while they suck your blood. It's the most powerful anticoagulant in the world and the reason leeches have been used in healing practices for thousands of years. I'm fascinated by leeches because they present a real dichotomy. On one hand, they're these parasitic creatures that feed off our blood, but on the other hand, we use them as medicine. Hirudin is extremely potent and effective, but it has no antidote. So if you're given too much, it can kill you. For this reason, its greatest strength is that it's so powerful, and its greatest weakness is that it's so powerful. I called my record Hirudin because it's about toxic relationships and leeches felt like the perfect metaphor. Toxic relationship is one that's unbalanced when one person is giving more than they're receiving. They wear you down slowly over time, sometimes so slowly you're not even aware it's happening. They're relationships that work to make you feel small. We experience them not only romantically, but in friendship, creative partnerships, with family, and even within ourselves. Toxic relationships are like leeches in that they present another complicated dichotomy. We love and hate to be in them. They hurt us, but they also make us feel good. And it can be really hard to recognize when the balance has finally tipped, when the good parts have become overwhelmed by the bad. As I was reflecting and writing about what I had experienced, I realized Hirden is a breakup record, but it's not a heartbreak record. Ending the toxic relationships in my life was liberating. It doesn't matter what you say to me. As an artist, I've always created a lot of barriers for myself. I refused to entertain the possibility that my strengths could grow or evolve and got stuck in a mindset that there were things I was just bad at, despite not trying to improve them. It's definitely something I've needed to work on by myself, but I also think when you're in a toxic relationship, the other person sort of has this ability to magnify your weaknesses as a way to control you and also diminish your strengths. It's a technique that might make them feel powerful, just briefly, and you feel small. It took a long time for me to realize that the ones you carry with you should uplift you and make you feel strong, not the opposite. When I finally let go of those toxic relationships, I let go of all those creative barriers too. And suddenly there was a blank canvas in front of me. Don't, 
Making Hiroden was about finding new ways of working, new people to collaborate with, and also learning how to participate in every part of the process. Although the territory was unknown, it wasn't scary. It was fun. And the process felt like medicine. I started out by booking a few days of sessions at a studio in Toronto with some local musicians I hadn't met before. There was no plan. Almost everything was improvised. It could have gone wrong, but those unfettered sessions ended up forming the sonic bedrock of the album. For the first time, I worked with outside producers. Something I've always been scared to do because I imagined having to give something up to make room for their ideas. But in reality, they helped me realize my ideas more thoroughly. It's really difficult to keep perspective when you're deep in a project, but my producers kept my intentions in focus. I worked with Joseph Shabison, a self-described tone-obsessed saxophone and synth player who created these really beautiful sonic textures on almost every track. And Roddy McDonald, who was able to bring a lot of clarity into the songs and their arrangements. Simple suggestions like adding piano chords to the chorus to fill it out made a, a world of a difference in bringing all of the disparate parts recorded over dozens of sessions together. Although the process of making Hiroden was really collaborative, lyrically, it's the most personal I've been on any recording, and that was intentional. After putting out a record called Future Politics, which was full of big ideas and big concepts about the future, I started to wonder if I was the one to be leading those conversations. It made me think, what role can and should musicians play to help in the ongoing battle for social justice. I started to focus on the idea of vulnerability and how all of our vulnerabilities connect us and help us relate to each other. I thought maybe if I could encourage people to access these vulnerable places to make them feel connected to somebody, it might help them face challenges in confrontations with more empathy and understanding. I was influenced by singers and songwriters like Joan Armour Trading and Chavela Vargas. I love the sonic textures and acoustic electronic music and was really inspired while living in London by a jazz scene and a club scene that intersected. I wanted Hiroden to feel alive, to feel vulnerable, to feel like it would have its own breath percolating through it. I wanted to make a new connection with every person who would decide to listen to it. <laughs> 